So before I offend you today, don't forget that God is my lawyer. So this ain't hate speech. This is great speech. Anybody that's broke because they don't feel like going hard. Those are the ones that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about if you are disabled and you're in some certain situation that you can't control. I'm talking about lazy, slothful people. That is against the law. That is a sin. That's against God. OK, and I'm going to prove it today. OK, so guess what? Proverbs 6 and 6 says, go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. If you look at the ant colony, they never take the Day off. An ant does not give a damn that today is Sunday, but you do. So you want to chill, you want to watch TV, you want to spend time with your family. And then when bill time come up, we scrambling and we all trying to figure out why we're broke all the time. That's why the scripture says, consider the ants. That means you're supposed to always be in operations. If you're not working, then you need to hire somebody that's always working to replace you. So guess what? If you're slothful, you just feel like being lazy, you don't feel like doing it, then you deserve whatever you get. And I've been on the end of that. I've suffered that. And I know exactly how it feels, which is why I'm coming at y'all like this. So appreciate it. Like, but Anyway, so we're going to come here. Colossians 3 and 23 says, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. So men will tell you to take a vacation. Your family will tell you, dude, you're working too hard. Why don't you take a day off or something? You're going to burn yourself out. You're going to run yourself into the ground. That's men. He didn't say consider men and be wise. He said consider the ant, meaning the ant got more sense to know that Winter is coming. And if I don't work during this summer, then I'm going to starve to death while I'm on the ground freezing. OK, so check this out. <clears throat> Proverbs 19 and 15 says, and this is all for business. OK, you get the business principles for the Bible and it'll keep us successful. See, I wasn't following the Bible when I ran into a lot of trouble and I'm still getting myself up out of the grave right now. OK, so <laughs> check this out. Proverbs 19 and 15 says slothfulness casted into a deep sleep. And an idle soul shall suffer hunger. Think of idle. What do you think about when you think of idle? Idle is just coasting. OK, you can put, you know, I used to drive tractor trailers over the road and, you know, overnight when you want to run the heat, you can just put the uh, engine on idle. So it'll keep it on. But it's not like it's really, really running for real, for real. So that's kind of how you are. You're existing. You have a nine to five job or you got a business and you're just existing, but you're not going as hard as you can go. Your engine isn't revved up. You're idle. So that's why you run into these little pockets where you suffer hunger. We suffer hunger because of that. Trust me, I know from experience. So check this out. <laughs> Second Thessalonians. For anybody, any so-called Christians that believe that, oh, God will just provide even if I'm a bum and I'm sitting on my butt. Check this out. Second Thessalonians 3 and 10 says, for even when we were with you, this we commanded. What's a commandment? I mean, you got to do it. It's a rule. It's a law. You follow men's law. Your ass won't speed down there, uh, down the street without getting pulled over and scared of the ticket, but you won't follow God's laws. Check this out. So it says, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Oh, oh, I thought you didn't have to work. I thought it was just all about faith and God will provide and all of that extra stuff. The scripture says that if you don't work, you don't eat. So that's why it's Sunday and I'm creating all of this. You see, I'm in, wearing the same thing. I'm just going back to back to back to back, considering the ant, like the scripture tells me to, so I don't have to run into poverty and hunger all the damn time. Okay. So listen to the scripture. Okay. So check this out. Proverbs 20 and four. It says, I, uh, the sluggard will not plow by reason of cold. <laughs> Your feelings will keep you poor. Remember, your feelings will keep you into poverty. It's animals that's out there working year round, no matter what the season is. But we're supposed to be the wisest of all creatures. We're supposed to have dominion, but we don't know that we're supposed to keep it up so we don't fall into a down season or a famine. OK, so it says the sluggard will not plow by reason of cold. Therefore, shall he beg in harvest and have nothing. So if you're not out there working while everybody else is working, you taking off and just coasting and stuff. Well, when the fruits and all of that come in, when the fruits of other people's labor come in, you ain't going to have nothing to show for it. And you're going to be left begging. The scripture says we're supposed to lend. We're not supposed to be the beggar or the borrower. It says if you're a beggar, you might as well not even be alive. OK, and that's, that's bad business. OK, so Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 18. And I'm a, I'm a guilty of this scripture right here. Uh, during the scamdemic, I was killing it, y'all. And I got comfortable because I was killing it. Then I started running into some issues in Mexico. And now I'm in Panama and we're getting everything back going and, and prosperous and all of that extra stuff. But I'm guilty of this one. And you don't want to be guilty of it because it sucks. Right. OK, so it says by much slothfulness, the building decayed. And through idleness of the hands, the house drop it through. So that means if you're building something up, you're building a business. If you're not constantly doing maintenance and keeping it sharp and going and everything at its peak, 
shape and condition, then eventually it's just going to start falling apart. Things don't get better by themselves. They only get worse by themselves. So if you see metal rusting or you see a car getting old and falling apart, things can get worse by itself. It's not going to get better. So this scripture is saying if you're not constantly improving and sharpening your gift and your businesses and what you're working on, it's going to begin falling apart. And that's one of the things I was doing. I was living it up and killing it and traveling and doing all of that. So I went sharpening my skills and making sure that I'm at the peak condition. And then things started happening. Right. So so this is why you don't want to fall into that. You follow these scriptures, they'll let you know. Okay. All right. So Proverbs 13 and 4 says this. Look, this, this the Bible has all the secrets to wealth, y'all. There's no guru you can watch that can tell you how to get rich faster than God. It's just not. And I'm telling you the damn truth. Okay. So look, the soul of the sluggard, meaning lazy, the soul of the sluggard desires. You always want some, but have nothing. But you ain't got nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. So what does it mean to be diligent? Always working at it, persistent. All right, going, going at it consistently, giving it everything you got. You're going to get rich. When the scripture says made fat, it's talking about rich, wealthy. So for those of you who think that God don't care if you got money, there's a crap load of dang old scriptures in here about you getting wealthy, right? Okay, so pay attention, man. All right, so if you're diligent, you'll be made fat. No days off, no time off, no vacations. And if you do need to take some time off, you need to put systems and virtual assistance and assistance and people in place so that it can pick up the slack for you. You never see an ant colony laid off. If an ant dies, if an ant dies, they literally put some, another ant in his place so that the operations continue. And that's exactly how you're supposed to go. That's why he says, consider the ants. Okay. Proverbs 21 and 25. It says the desire of the slothful killeth him for his hands refuse to labor. Look, it's some people that you can give them all the secrets, tips, tricks, marketing ads and, and blueprints and all of that, but they still won't do it. And that's why it says, yo, your slothfulness, your feelings of laziness will kill you. You will literally sit here and starve to death and be a bum because you won't go hard. Whatever you put forth your hand to do, you're supposed to do it with all your might. Remember that. That's what the scripture says. OK, so check this out. Proverbs 10 and 5. OK, this, this, this Bible tells you everything you need to know to be prosperous and successful in business. I never got this from Grant Cardone, Alex or Mo. These are all look, I'm not bashing them. These dudes are all smart. But remember, the scripture says the wisdom of men is foolishness to God. If you want to be levels higher than anybody that you watch, you have to uh, stop being stubborn. And I'm guilty of this. Stop being stubborn and consistently watching people because they can flash stuff in your face. But you need to just go straight to the Bible. The top richest people in the world are getting their knowledge from the Bible. Trust me, I don't want to be an average millionaire. They always talking about the average millionaire has seven income streams. I don't need all that. The scripture says that you're supposed to be like focused. You're supposed to not be lukewarm. You're not supposed to like be all over the place. OK, so if I want to be a Jeff Bezos type dude where I got one income stream that dominates the damn world, why the hell would I want to be a damn average millionaire? Don't make no sense. Do it. Right. OK, so check this out. He, he that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causes shame. So while everybody out there playing on their vacations, trying to go viral on Instagram and everything, you're supposed to be going hard. You're supposed to be giving it every damn thing you got because it's going to be a down season. It's going to be a recession. It's going to be another scamdemic. And if you ain't on top of your game, you're going to get flooded on. OK, and you're going to die. You're going to perish. Your business is going to be no more. Trust me. I don't, like I said, I'm building back up. <laughs> I was on top. Of, I was on top of the damn world. All right. And now I'm building back up because I wasn't following these principles. But now I am. And the reason why I can get back on top of my game so fast and recover is because of this. Not because of some guru, not because of some some dude I watched on YouTube. None of these dudes is helping you or helping me. All right. So your feelings will keep you poor. You can watch this right now. Be stubborn. You can say, oh, he's twisting scriptures. You can say, oh, you know, he's just being mean or he's being harsh. Oh, I feel offended because it's 2022 and the men are women and the women are men. And then everybody's confused and your dog is a dolphin and don't know who he is. But you can't deny the scripture. And it literally says that God gives us the power to have wealth. No man can. OK. All right. So if a person that you're watching isn't teaching you the principles of God in order to get wealth, then you're watching the wrong person. OK, you have to follow in the footsteps of Christ. Him and the disciples went broke. I don't know what your damn church told you, but all of them had businesses. OK, so if you want to know how to use God's principles, God's formulas in order to build wealth is a link in the description and a number that you can text. If you're serious only and you're ready to stop being, you know, just get at me, dog. Be a mess boy.